Thank you, Amy Kimberly here. Um, I'm also going to start, well, I'm going to start with a little Muriel Ruckheiser, who is my um, complete poetic hero. And um, it's also from the Book of the Dead, which is the piece that um, Tomiko read. And what I love about the Book of the Dead is it's actually overtly about a disaster. It's about the 1929 Gully Bridge mining disaster. But what I love most about the Book of the Dead is Ruckheiser's call, um, call out to us that the poem is an action. And her refusal of official language, which as we sit around listening to, you know, words like spill, um, I think we really need to hear that. So here's a small portion of near the end of the Book of the Dead, which um, contains my favorite lines. These roads will take you into your own country, seasons and maps coming where this road comes into a landscape mirrored in these men. Past all your influences, your home river, constellations of cities, mottos of childhood, parents and easy cures, war, all evasions, wishes. What one word must never be said, dead, and these men fight off our dying cough in the theaters of the war. What two things shall never be seen? They, what we did. Enemy, what we mean. This is a nation seen and halfway house. What three things can never be done? Forget, keep silent, stand alone. Um, I'm gonna read two poems from my book, which um, is all about Hurricane Katrina and my parents' experience as they were there during um, the storm and about what happened to New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. And um, I'm going to start with a poem that's a, about the before. You know, a lot of my book has ended up being inflected by um, high school science that we had to take Louisiana ecology, a class that I dreaded um, when I was 16, but it has really served me well in later life. But this poem is about a, um, a science exhibit, um, a weather exhibit, actually, a science museum called You, Author of Weather. You, Author of Weather, stand outside the science center in a slur of rain, waiting for your mother, waiting to walk together to the exhibit of cloud rings where your mother will push down the round metal plate to force a stream of fog. This fog will ring and ring and spin into a vortex, whirlpool, tornado, hurricane, or none of these. And the reader asks, are you enjoying the before, when you're still allowed to create a storm, when you bend down to swallow a whole, a perfect ring of cloud, and it tastes like you imagine sex will be because you're 10, and everything can be a metaphor, and what you want is to open your mouth to the hurricane's eye, transparent and swirling and sweet. And my last poem is about Dauphin Island, a place which sadly is um, on the news, a place that was really never on the news before. Um, and um, it's an island off the coast of Alabama where tar balls are washing up. Um, and all these places on the Gulf Coast on Highway 90, now called Hurricane Alley, along Mississippi, Alabama, have barely recovered from the storm. Some are gone, completely erased, literally erased. And um, the ones that are there, it's just everything is very, very fragile. And Dauphin Island is one of those places where things are extremely fragile. Um, and this poem is called Dauphin Island Field Notes. And yet again, it's about my um, Louisiana ecology class and a field trip we all took there um, as high school students. And it's also about what that island um, has gone through um, in the past couple of years. Dauphin Island Field Notes. On the other side of the island, oil rigs once perched like flightless birds. On the other side, houses are still painted mint green, soft butter yellow. Houses stuck on crooked pilings, stilts collapsed like broken teeth. I'm on my way back to the island where I once traveled on my 12th grade field trip. I'm standing on the ferry, leaning against the rail, not there yet, but I remember how I once easily erased this island, how I sat at my school desk and with a pink diamond-shaped eraser rubbed off an island out how we were taught it was Massacre Island in the days before New Orleans, before Mobile. Capital of the Louisiana Territory, the island was crowded with bones, stacks of cracked white piles of ash. How the Army Corps of Engineers loaned our science class the barracks for six days. Girls in hip boots 
we waded into the Gulf to fill pneumatic tubes with sentiment to study coastal erosion. How at night that coast was a necklace of lights. How sand overwashed Bienville Boulevard. Now I want to turn back. Now there is more to copy, to write down. Now stand outside the ship and shore and read the island story on the bulletin board. Yellow hammer building systems, modular homes certified for 140 mile per hour winds. We can move your RV to higher ground before the hurricane comes, call. Attention Katrina victims, your local volunteer organization has opened an office on Dauphin Island. Storm protection now, free estimates for hurricane shutters. For sale, 1991 Chrysler, New Yorker, blue, no storm damage. I walk to the west end of the island where a narrow spit of land dissolves, where our class spooned water to test levels, collected leaves in specimen bags, wrote up careful lists of the disappearing, sand shark, spotted mackerel on sheets of school loose leaf. The coast, we learned, was eroding at a rate of five miles a year. And we took in this information. We copied it down and we sat on the pier late at night and talked about the future as if it would always include this coast of scattered sparkling lights. How easy it was then to smooth that page flat.